Hello everyone and welcome to the Kieran Kill Show here for CKTV on YouTube and today we're joined by none other than the founder of the Beatles Fest, of course Dylan Fest and of course Trad Fest right here in Moville. It is of course the one and only Jerry McLaughlin. Hi, How's it going, Jerry? Um, good. Coming up in a few weeks' time is, of course, Beatles Fest, and you'll be the man that's going to be organising all the events for that uh, very, now you would call, very popular event in the town of Moville. Um, have you any thoughts coming up with that coming up now soon? Well, it's actually going to be a, a double Beatles Fest this year. The normal, the normal Beatles Fest will be the 16th to 19th of uh, August. Uh, but I've been asked to put on some uh, a smaller Beatles fest when the people from the Clipper race the golf are here on the weekend of the 29th to the sec 29th of June to the 2nd of July. Right. So, yeah. Um, hopefully Tony Bramwell will be back over again. He loves it here. Yeah. He told uh, Katie Barr that his his three favourite places in the world were Nashville, Hawaii, and Mobile. Right. Right. And he's, uh, he loves the Guinness here. He loves the people. Um, he, he obviously loves the Beatles and he just likes the, the ambience here. He was here three times last year. He was here for the uh, Beatles Fest, then the Dylan Fest. Then he was a judge. He, he came back to help judge the songwriters contest in October, November. Right. So uh, I think he told somebody else that he probably spent more time in Brazil last year than anywhere else, including home. Imagine, like for for someone that was, of course, wasn't he the road manager for the Beatles? Uh, he was a road manager for the Beatles and. Not just that, he's got an award from MTV. For, he, he made the early films of the Beatles, you know, like the, the, the clips when they, well, basically uh, amongst the first pop videos. So he got an award uh, from MTV for that. Um, wow. And then he went on to become, well, he became head of Apple Films, joint head of Apple Records. Then he went on to become, um, well, he was also, Brian, Brian Epstein had him as the Beatles, well, the, his stable, the Beatles stable's talent scout. But he discovered uh, James Taylor. He right. discovered Eva Cassidy, uh, who sold seven million records after her death. Uh, he should have discovered another couple because he he did discover Paul Simon, who had been playing in pubs in Paris in the mid '60s. Right. And then he came over to playing a few pubs in London. Uh, so he told Brian Epstein, "says you got to come and see this guy. You know, it's in a pub in London." Uh, so Brian Epstein came along and told me, "says well, what do you think, Brian?" Brian said, "he's he's too small and too Jewish. Look, I don't think I can sell him." <laughs> so it was another few years before he made it with Simon and Garfunkel, and also right. Sony was in, was in charge. He was a talent scout, but he had to get permission from the Beatles. So in the late in the late sixties, uh, he would be in at the Apple Studios every day, and a different Beatle would come in each day to look at the talent that was there. Uh, and he got a demo tape, and that day was John Lennon. Right. And he, Tony really loved that. He thought it was fantastic. This would be in the late sixties. Right. Uh, 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 he said to John Lennon, "What do you think?" He said, I don't rate them. Uh, it was Queen, who uh, could have been discovered a lot earlier than they actually were discovered. So it seems they still remind them of it when you see them. Wow. He says it wasn't his fault, you can blame John Lennon. So um, he's done all, he was in charge of the, he was in charge of getting the music together. For, he was in charge of Polydor Records, first of all, they had the Bee Gees, right. the Slades, Roxy Music, the Jam and the Stable. And he was put in charge of getting the music. I was uh, just going to say, some massive names with Polydor Records over the years. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, Tony put, was asked to put together the music for Grease and Saturday Night Fever. It was him who got the Bee Gees involved. And then wow. he was in charge of music for a few Bond films. It was him who got Paul McCartney to do Live and Let Die. So he's done a lot. Uh, he's, still, he's still doing a lot in this, in this time. Uh, and but, to have him here in Moville each year, yeah. thanks to you, Jerry, is a big, big thing, you know. Well, he uh, the first year he came over was what 2010. He contacted me and said, "Do you want me to come?" Yeah. So I asked him what he did, sir, because his people people knew to like me to talk with the mop top. So it seems just before that, uh, Paul McCartney had asked him to come to Nashville. He said, "I've never played here before, Tony." And Tony was a childhood friend of his from the age of seven. Um, and so Tony went over. Uh, Paul said to him, um, Can you go, "Why don't you come back in another two weeks? I'm doing Montreal." And he says, "Sorry, Paul. He says, I'm, I'm doing the Beatles Fest in Montreal." Right, imagine. <laughs> that's, that's saying uh, something, isn't it? Well, when he was sitting outside Rosato's got a pint of Guinness, he got a text message from, from Paul McCartney saying, uh, 
we're both on the papers today, check the Daily Mail, so he bought a copy of the Daily Mail, and there it was, an unauthorised biography of Paul McCartney. There was quotes from Tony about Heather Mills, who he didn't like. Aye. So uh, he, he took a picture of a pint of Guinness in Rosato's, and he, and he, he took a picture of the Toucan and uh, sent him across to, uh, to Paul McCartney, wherever he was, I think it was in America. And Paul McCartney uh, texted back saying, Text just say lucky bastards. I hope that's okay for your YouTube. <laughs> oh, I, anything goes in my ears. <laughs> um, it was just that's amazing stuff, uh, Jerry. I just wanted to ask you about your early life in Scotland and coming across. What inspired? I know you had family in both places, but what inspired you to come to Mobile and settle down? Well, um, well, I used to I used to come every every year on holiday. And, Loved it, you know, coming down that, that dairy road towards Maville. Yeah. And suddenly you were checking, is it going to be around this corner or that corner? Right. And then suddenly you see it and your heart soared and you were there again. I never thought I would come and live here, but uh, we're in America and I was uh, building up this uh, website. And when the money was down to run down, I was trying to get a green card. But because of 9 11, everything was taking longer. Right. And the money was running down, so. So we over thought around that time you came over, was it? Right. Well, it was, it was around about that time. 2000, right. November 2002. All oh, right. My green card actually came through, I heard many years later. I actually came through in February 2003, but it was too late for us. We were uh, gone by then. And uh, see, I was, I was just setting up my, my website, itcontractor.com then. And it was the early stages. We had, wasn't much income coming in. We still a lot better now. But, right. Uh, so now, like, on hindsight, are you happy you made that decision? Or? Oh yeah, yeah. I had a great time across here. You know, people often ask me, uh, where are you going on holiday this, this year? I, I say, I'm on holiday. Uh, true. On a night like tonight, it's not much of a holiday with the rain, but... No, you've got to take it off when it's the rain. That's exactly, I mean, yeah. if, if this was... Um, if we had great weather here, it would be one of the world's top resorts. I mean, with the, the scenery and the... I don't, I'll say, my brother-in-law, uh, he's from San Francisco, Raven. Right. And he says that... Uh, he said, and he's been in a lot of places, and he says the Shore Walk is one of his three favourite walks in the whole wow, world. Wow, that's amazing. And he's been it's a big places. statement. <laughs> oh, it is, yeah. 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 Um, as far as um, we go on through the years then, and we, we can talk about the uh, different festivals that you've organised in the town, uh, should we may as well start with the early one in the year, Trad Fest? How did that come about? Well, there was uh, somebody from Derry organised a trad fest. He had it in four pubs, but it was quite expensive. I think it was something like uh, the musicians got 100, 100 euros each, four musicians, 400. And there was three sessions, Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and uh, Saturday night. So it was 1,200 quid, and I think after two years the pubs couldn't afford it. I mean, I went to see one session, uh, the, the Saturday afternoon session in the Barracuda. Right. And that was the only one there with four musicians. I didn't feel I could leave here like it. I felt I had to clap after every uh, uh. song. So obviously Barracuda couldn't have made much out of that. Right. So it looked, uh, it was, looked in danger of collapsing. So I thought, well, I don't know any trad musicians. Uh, yeah. Well, let's see if we can keep it going just until somebody else grabs a hold of it and come uh. with it. But uh, nobody's come forward yet, so it's uh, still me. Right, right. Very good. Well, um, it's... You know, it looks positive for the future for that. And then we go on to talk about um, the next one then, which will be Beatles Fest, which is coming up in a few weeks' time. Can you give us any insights into what's happening with that? Well, um, there, um, it's the only annual Beatles Fest in uh, Ireland. I've got a couple of guys from Dublin that want to come up and play. Wow. Uh, a guy that, that uh, Beatle Bug Radio, he, he's, uh, he's part of that, so hopefully we should get some good publicity. Right. Hopefully Tony... Tony wants to come, but I haven't had uh, confirmation from Tony Bramwell. I'm hoping he'll come. Right. And we'll get quite a few good acts for that. The uh, Dylan Fest was actually the first one. Uh, that was in 2007. Uh, I noticed there's quite a lot of Dylan fans around the town. Probably Paddy McLaughlin had uh, brought up a generation of Aye. two generations, maybe, of uh, Dylan fans. You know, I'm actually, I'm hoping to get Paddy on, on the show in, a, in the next few weeks as well. And Paddy on the show. Talk about. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, we don't say that. <laughs> I'll have to that bit now. Um. <laughs> Before Paddy sees him. I'm sure he won't mate. <laughs> but uh, I do hope to get him on because he has a good knowledge of music. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. and I'm trying to cover a good few of the music people around the place in the next few weeks, you know. And uh, was talking to Raymond last week, Raymond McGrorty, about his past in the show band, dance bands and that. And you now yourself, who kind of brings it all together. And so... Uh, as far as the um, Dillon Fest goes, what I would 
How has that come along over the years, or what's the story? Well, the, uh, within the, I got the idea. I noticed there was lots of Dylan bands in town, a lot of Dylan songs played. So I thought, why not put on a Dylan festival? So six weeks later, it was on. Uh, I was even on the. Uh, I got a call. I've never heard of Dave Fanning, but I got a call from uh, his producer right. on the Thursday. It said. Uh, the Thursday of the start of the festival, he said, would, would, he says, I hope you don't mind, I emailed you and you didn't get back to me. He said, I hope you don't mind me, me calling you. I said, no, no bother. He says, I'm on the Dave Fanning show. Right. Uh, he's wondering if you'd want to uh, be on the show tonight, it's a radio show. So I said, no bother. Uh, that's fine, but I thought, I'll help the lad out, whoever he is. Right. Uh, I'd never heard of him. Uh, You'd never heard of him, though. No. He's pretty I, iconic in Ireland. Like. <laughs> I, didn't I didn't tell him, because I, I didn't tell him I was going to be on. And then uh, wow. I think I was on talking to him for about uh, seven minutes. Right. But, but uh, my sister, Angie, who lives in Dublin, Aye. she was uh, listening to the radio when suddenly I came on talking about the Dylan Fest with Dave Fanning. Right. And not only that, my parents over in Greenock, one was washing the dishes and one was drying the dishes and, <laughs> and they were listening to Dave Fanning oh, for some reason that. when suddenly I came on talking to him, which gave oh. a bit of a surprise. <laughs> so it, 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 uh, there, was a, there was a good crowd, a very good crowd, surprisingly good crowd. Uh, the first one seen as uh, it's only six, six weeks notice of it. Right. But, uh, somebody said they were talking to uh, a couple from, uh, I get, no, it was a guy from San Francisco who'd come over especially for it. And there was a Canadian couple as well, right. who must have heard, I don't know which radio show, perhaps it was Dave Fanning, and they stopped the car and asked somebody, he was down the country somewhere, where's my bill? And so they headed straight up here for it, so yeah, it turned out pretty well. Good stuff. It's uh, been going ever since. <laughs>